All right, let's get started with our makeup lecture for today. Again, I apologize for all of the network connectivity issues that we had uh, that caused us to not be able to meet uh, uh, live. Uh, so I've re I'm recording this short video to just go through uh, the basics of our last topic, which is uh, spirally reinforced columns. Um, uh, just a, a little bit on logistics. Uh, I'm still grading homework 9.1. Uh, I hope this to get that to you either today or tomorrow. I've posted the solution. Homework 9.2 is due today, but I can tell you between now and Friday, I'll have all the homework graded and all the solutions posted because I want all that taken care of between now and, and when we have our exam review. Uh, don't forget the exam review is on Friday, uh, so please come prepared with questions. Uh, we'll talk about the format of the exam, what's on the exam, uh, and what you should uh, expect. Uh, with that, let's just go ahead and get right into our topic today, which is uh, circular and spirally reinforced columns. Um, let's recall the, the capacity equation for columns. It's still going to be the, the same equation. Uh, the phi times the alpha times the term in the brackets, 0.85 FC prime times the area of the concrete, uh, plus FY times the area of the steel. Nothing, nothing really changes there. Uh, the only thing that changes from a capacity standpoint is uh, A, our, our phi and alpha values change because we're dealing with a, 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 different, uh, a, a different beast, a different animal, uh, and that will become clear here in a second why they change. Uh, but also, I guess just from a, a mechanic standpoint or a grunt work standpoint, the properties themselves might be a, just might take a little bit more time to compute. Uh, we got some reinforcement ratios we're looking at. We've got to compute uh, gross areas as well as core areas, and we'll we'll see that uh, here in a little bit. It's not very difficult. It's just maybe some of the front end work just takes a little bit longer. Um, so one of the things you'll notice is that the phi values and the alpha values are higher for spirally reinforced columns. You're actually allowed to use more of that capacity, and that's because spirally reinforced columns exhibit a certain type of behavior uh, that, that we'll see here in a second. I do also want to remind everybody of the various detailing checks that we had per, for columns. Now, we had to keep our steel percentage between 0 0.01 and 0 0.08. That's still a, a percentage that we need to meet. Um, we also have limits on the number of longitudinal bars. Remember, it was four for tied columns and six for spirally reinforced columns. Um, there were a, a, a lot of other uh, detailing checks, don't get me wrong, but the rest were for tied columns. So there's, for spiral co uh, spirally reinforced columns, there's really just these two and then one more related to spiral reinforcement, but we'll get to that uh, here in a second. Um, Let's make sure that we're all clear on some notations. So I'm going to uh, uh, just make sure and discuss this. Up until now, we've talked about square columns, but really we've talked about tied columns. So um, I want to make sure that there's a clear difference between a circular column with ties and a circular column with spirals. And really, from a behavior standpoint, it's these spirals that affect how the column behaves once it fails uh, uh, significantly. So just so everybody is clear, if I looked here on the left, I have a circular column. They're both circular columns, but one on the left, I have a series of ties. Um, and with, with ties, we would space them. I mean, we've been seeing problems where we would space them at 12 inches, 16 inches, 20 inches. I mean, they, they have a significant distance between them. Uh, with, with ties, you know, we're still going to use our old phi and alpha values. With spirals, they jump up because we have a, first off, we have a lot more lateral reinforcement. So to give you an idea, spiral reinforcement, the pitch or the space between your, your increments, you know, like say from, if you see the laser pointer from here to here, you know, we have to limit that to three inches, whereas over here with ties, we had tied columns that had the ties every 12 inches, every 16 inches, something like that. So there's far more lateral reinforcement in a spirally reinforced column than there is uh, with a tied column. So that's one of the reasons you're allowed to use uh, higher phi and alpha values, but that doesn't really get at the meat of, well, well, why would you even go with this? Like, what's the point? What's the point of, of doing uh, or using spiral reinforcement? Um, so why use spiral reinforcement? Well, it all has to do with how a concrete column fails. Um, so I pulled this image uh, from Google. This is a really good image that sort of shows what happens when you have uh, a column that, ex uh, that experiences failure. And both, for, so first of all, so let's talk about what happens when a concrete column fails. So 
Uh, here on the left and on the right, we have two columns. The one on the left is a spirally reinforced column, and the one on the right is a tied column. First off, when you start to load a column and it starts to experience failure, the first thing that you'll see is that the cover flakes off, and we call that spalling. So all of the, the concrete that's on the outside will start to flake off. So you can kind of see that here best on the left because between the, the, the face and here where the, the longitudinal bars are present, all that concrete uh, is gone. So that, that's the first thing that happens. But what happens from there? Well, uh, the reason why spirally reinforced columns behave so well, the reason why you're allowed to use uh, higher fee values and higher alpha values, ultimately why you're allowed to use a higher capacity is because of what these spirals do. See, these spirals tend to contain and confine the core of the column. And so when I use that term core of the column, I'm talking about all of that reinforcement inside the, the ties or the spirals. So if I go here on the previous slide, the core would be everything inside here or inside here, inside the, the ties and the longitudinal reinforcement. Those spirals tend to contain that core, so when the column is, is experiencing failure, um, the, the ties bind that core together and they prevent the longitudinal bars from bowing out and buckling. Over here on the right, this is a tied column, and you can see not only has the concrete spalled off, but those reinforcement bars, those reinforcing bars are gone. I mean, they're done for. They, they've buckled out uh, and, and they're gone. Um, and so whenever you want to bump up your capacity and bump up the behavior under large loading events, spiral columns are the way to go. And so one very popular uh, uh, application for spirally reinforced columns are in earthquake prone regions when we need to contain the column and, and, and get a, a bump on our capacity because earthquakes can put some very significant loads uh, on structures. And so spirally reinforced columns are really good uh, uh, for those regions. Now. How do you detail spirally, uh, spiral reinforcement? Well, ACI treats the spiral reinforcement really sort of the way it behaves, and it's kind of like a thin-walled pressure vessel. So most of you, uh, I hope, uh, covered this in Engineering 216 or your Mechanics and Materials, Mechanics of Deformable Bodies course. You have a, a pressure vessel, uh, and you, know, you have a, a, a pressure vessel that's subjected to an internal pressure, and so it develops hoop stresses and radial stresses uh, and what have you. And so that's a pretty common uh, problem in an undergraduate Mechanics and Materials or Mechanics of Deformable Bodies course. Um, so what we do is we basically ensure that our spiral reinforcement ratio provides enough reinforcement ratio to contain the, uh, the, the, the pressure that you would get in the core. Um, the formula that you see below basically just comes from a thin-walled pressure vessel analogy. What we do is we look at the force inside the, 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 this sort of quote-unquote pressure vessel, sort of treating the walls of this pressure vessel, pressure vessel blah, uh, as if it was the, um, the spiral reinforcement. And what we then say is we say, all right, let's use thin-walled pressure vessel analogy uh, and, and uh, express this in terms of a reinforcement ratio. And let's solve for what is the reinforcement ratio required to contain that core uh, to, so that it achieves 0.85 FC prime. And so uh, the long story short is if you take 0.85 and divide it by 2, you get 0 0.425. And ACI just rounds that up a bit for simplicity and calls it 0.45. So that's where this 0.45 comes from. It's just half of, of 0.85 just rounded up a bit. Um, and then where's the half come from? It just comes from the like hoop stress and radial stress analogy that you learned in Engineering 216. Um, so I could show you the derivation. I, I'm just trying to, to make the, the concept as uh, straightforward as possible. But in order to compute this, you need the area of the, the gross area of the column, the area of the core, and then just FC prime and FY. So it's a really straightforward uh, uh, problem. So in, in order to do this, what we do is we compare this, which is the minimum amount of spiral reinforcement we provide against the actual amount of spiral reinforcement that we provide. So of course, we need to be able to compute the actual amount of spiral reinforcement. Now, the formula for the actual spiral reinforcement is a little wonky. It's not hard. It's just uh, uh, it, it doesn't look simple. Like it, it is just just plug and chug. But I want to show you where this formula comes from. Um, if you remember, like we're talking about a reinforcement ratio. What is a reinforcement ratio? It's basically comparing the the steel with the concrete. 
And so we do this by looking at the volumes when we're looking at spiral reinforcement. And so what we say is we look at a spirally reinforced uh, column and we say, okay, let's look at this from a um, uh, from an analogy standpoint. Let's see if I can pull the pin up here. Let's see if I can do this. So we start off by looking at the spiral and we, we then look at the core. So let's start off looking at the concrete core because I think this is pretty straightforward. So we have a, a, a column that looks like this. And what I'm doing is I'm going to look at the volume across just one pitch, just one, uh, one of the... Uh, one of these dimensions here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the volume of concrete in this pitch with the volume of spiral steel in this pitch and so that'll be my reinforcement ratio. So for the core what we're saying is that this here we're going to use the diameter of the core and what's the diameter of the core? Uh, if you look here this is the overall diameter of the column and this is the diameter of the core. We just subtract uh, our covers off of that. So the volume of the concrete or the core is just pi over 4 uh, d squared times s. So it's just the volume of a cylinder. And so that's where that's where this formula comes from. As for the whoops, sorry. Uh, as for the volume of the spiral, what we do is we're trying to figure out how much steel goes across a, a given spiral. So basically the way that we treat that is we say that the volume of the spiral is the area of that bar multiplied by the circumference of the circle. So we say that for simplicity we just say it goes like the volume is the area and it just goes around the circle once. So circumference. I'm writing on the bottom of my screen so it's a little difficult with the keyboard here. And so the circumference of a circle is just pi times a diameter and what we say is the diameter is we say it's the core diameter but we're trying to get to the center of the bar so we subtract one bar di one half of our diameter on one side and one half on the other so if you looked at this so it's like you know we take the the um, I'm looking right here so we take the outer diameter and then we come in a half and come in a half so if you come in a half that's coming in a, a hole so that's where this formula comes from and where this formula comes from. And then we just divide the two and do a little bit of algebra to make the, uh, the math come through a, a little cleaner. And so that's it. So we just basically compare these two quantities, the minimum uh, spiral reinforcement ratio with the actual spiral reinforcement ratio. And as long as the actual is more than the minimum, we're good. There are a couple other requirements per ACI. You can't have a, a, a spiral... Uh, uh, spiral bar that's smaller than a number three. Um, most uh, number threes are pretty common for spirals and the, the clear spacing that pitch can't exceed three inches. So again you provide a lot more spiral reinforcement uh, than you would ties. Um, I want to show you how straightforward this is. We're going to find the capacity of this column. So it's a 15 inch diameter column. Uh, we have uh, one and a half inches of cover uh, so that's again to the outside. We have number three spirals at two inches and we're using seven number eights uh, for the longitudinal reinforcement. So I gave you the area of the steel there. It's 5.5 square inches. We've got four KSI concrete, 60 KSI steel, and we're going to uh, check the spiral reinforcement ratio uh, as well. So let me see if I can detach my keyboard. Um, Okay, so let's um, let's go here. Let me make sure I'm still recording. I am still recording. Okay, good. And so let me sit this down on the table. Let me see if I can go off that. Okay, I think I'm good here. Let me uh, pull this up. Okay, so here we have the column. We're going to just compute a, a few basic quantities uh, and then get right into it. So first off, we know that FC prime is 4 KSI. We know that Fy is 60. Okay. Now, let's start off with some geometric properties. So we know that the diameter of the column is 15 inches. So therefore, the gross area is... So this is a circle. So before it was a square column, we were using b squared. It's a circle. So we got to use pi over 4 d squared. So pi over 4 times... Um, 15 inches squared 
Uh, and when you plug over chug, or pl plug over chug, plug and chug, uh, that comes out to be 176.71. So that, that's pretty simple. Okay. What else do we know? We know that we're using seven number eights. So that tells us that AST is 5.5 inches squared. If we wanted to, uh, and I don't see any reason why not, we could say, um, give me one second. We could go ahead and do one quick ACI check. We could say note our reinforcement ratio is AST over AG, which is 5.5 inches squared over 176.71, which comes out to be 0 0.031, and so that's okay, uh, because it had to be between 0 0.01 and 0 0.08. And note also, um, there's seven longitudinal bars, and that's okay because it had to be greater than or equal to six bars for a spiral column. And so other than that, uh, those are the only two checks that we had to do um, from before. The rest of the, the detailing checks from before were only for tied columns. So that was... You know, maybe I didn't have that in my my set of hand notes I written I had written down, but that's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and include that. Okay, um, let's start off. Let's look at our spiral. So we have a number three spiral. So we can write down a couple of things. So first off, we know that the diameter of a spiral that's number three is three-eighths inch. Remember anything that's a number three to a number eight, the diameter is three over eight. Uh, we can also look up the area of a uh, number three bar, and you should remember the area of a number three from what we did in shear design. Uh, that's 0 0.11. Remember we would a lot of times use AV as 0.22 because remember it was U-shaped stirrup, so we had two bars. Um, Let's see, finally also we know that the pitch is two inches. We know those spirals are pitched at two inches. Okay, now um, we also know that we have two inches, sorry, no, 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 it wasn't two inches. This one has an inch and a half of cover. Now if we have an inch of, sorry, if we have an inch and a half of cover, what we now need to do is figure out what the core diameter is. Now, if you look over here, if you look up top, okay, this is the diameter of the column, but this, that's the diameter of the core. And for simplicity, when we do core, uh, core diameter, we just go to the outside of the spirals, just to keep it simple. So, the core diameter is the overall diameter minus two covers. We do two covers because there's, you know, one cover here and one cover here. So there's, you know, one there, one there. So we have to subtract two of these. So this is 15 inches minus 2 times 1.5 inches. So 15 minus 3 is 12 inches. And if that's the case, then the area of the core is pi over 4 dc squared. So pi over 4 times 12 inches squared, and so that is 113.10. Uh, okay. So like I said, so we need, um, so again, the, I think with circular and spiral columns, really the only thing is there's a little bit more work up front to, um, to, to, do, the, uh, to do the problem, but it's not really any more difficult, and you're going to see that here in a bit. Uh, and again, you can always pause the video and go back up to uh, what had been done previously. Uh, I'm just going to chug along with the calculations. Uh, I really want to just get two things done with this. First off is the design uh, axial capacity. Or axial. VPN. Now, remember, phi 
and alpha have changed. They're not 0 0.65 and 0 0.8. They're 0 0.75 and alpha is 0 0.85. And the big kicker that I want to make sure everybody uh, is aware of is that it is not because it's a circular column that these change. It's because it's a spirally reinforced column. That's what causes these to change. We could have a circular column with ties and we would use 0.65 and 0.8. That's the big kicker. Okay. So therefore, phi pn is phi times alpha times, uh, what is that, 0 0.85 fc prime uh, ag minus ast plus fy times ast. All right, so 0 0.75, 0 0.85, and then 0 0.85 again. Okay, one's the alpha, one's the constant term before FC prime. And then AG is 176.71 minus 5.5 square inches plus 60 KSI times again 5.50 inches squared. All right, and so VPN, when you chug that out, you get 581, we'll say 0.5 kips. And that's it. I mean, it, it, again, it's pretty simple. It's just, you know, you got to do maybe a little bit more work on your gross areas or, you know, your area calcs and whatnot. And again, don't forget to use the new fee value and the new alpha value. Again, only if you're dealing with spirally reinforced columns. It's not the circular shape. It's the, the lateral reinforcement. That's what matters. All right. Our last check is to look at the spiral steel. And so what we do is, again, we compute two quantities. The first thing we compute is our rho s min. So this is our minimum spiral reinforcement that we must provide according to ACI. And that's 0 0.45 AG over AC minus 1 times FC prime over FY is 0 0.45. And then, what is that, is it 176? 0.71, uh, 113, minus 1, and then this is 4 over 60. Now, first thing to keep in mind, when you do the math, these numbers come out small, okay? But remember, it's a reinforcement ratio. Remember, our row values are always tiny, so don't let that freak you out, okay? This comes out to 0 0.0178. Uh, and another thing, spot, uh, uh, they're unitless. You have inches squared over inches squared, KSI over KSI. So reinforcement ratios also uh, don't have any units. Now we also compare, now, now we also have to compute the actual, sorry, actual, got the T there. All right. And so what do we have? We have four AS, DC minus DS over SDC squared. Again, just the volume of steel divided by the volume of the concrete uh, and just doing a little bit of algebra to make the formula as simple as possible. That's all this is. So 4 times 0 0.11 inches squared times uh, 12 inches minus 3 eighths all over 2 inches times 12 inches squared. And if you look at your units, you'll see that the units cancel as well. On the bottom, we have inches times inches squared. On the top, we have inches squared times inches. So it's all cubic inches over cubic inches. Again, volume over volume, and it all cancels. And when you chug this out, you're going to get an actual... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. 
I, I mixed this up. This is wrong. I'm sorry. Um, this one is 0 0.0178 and this one is 0 0.0169. I apologize. For those of you who are probably following along on the video, if you were chugging that out, you're probably like, wait a minute, that's not right. Um, that's That was the, the situation. I, I apologize about that. So this one, uh, th that one's 0 0.0169. Okay. So the minimum is point, uh, so maybe I'll just sort of make sure that the comparison is clear here. So the minimum is 0 0.0169, and we have actually provided 0 0.0178. So what does that mean? That means we're good. We have provided more steel than what's actually required. So you got to exceed the minimum. So therefore, ACI requirements met. And that's it. That that's spiral reinforcement, uh, spirally reinforced column analysis in a nutshell. Um, as for design, uh, design really isn't that much. First off, A, it's, it's really not challenging. Uh, and B, it's not terribly different than uh, what was done before. Uh, so first off, when you're designing, all you do is this. Uh, you solve for, so you follow the same process as before. You solve for the required diameter and then you know, round accordingly to get an area and solve for your, uh, your required AST. Remember, when you're designing a column, you need to know three things. You need to know AG, AST, and then your lateral reinforcement. So AG and AST, no different. Same as it was before. Just make sure that you're using the right phi and alpha values. Make sure that you're using at least six bars. Um, another thing is make sure that... Um, uh, oh, um... One other thing, uh, if you remember with tied columns, we, we tried to make sure that the bars were even, like we, we used an even number of longitudinal bars. Not really a big deal with a circular column. We can use seven bars or nine bars or whatever, and all they're going to do is just go around the ring. So it's, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, as for uh, your spiral steel, all you do for uh, looking at your spiral reinforcement is just take the equation below, take um, take this equation right here, uh, and solve for s. You know, maybe start off say I'm going to assume a number three bar and just solve for s. Uh, and if your s value is really really tiny, maybe make it a number four or number five. That's it. That's that's really uh, uh, spiral column design in a nutshell. And so for the purposes of the class, especially with COVID-19, I just wanted to make sure that you were okay with spiral column analysis. Um, if you can do tied column design, you can do this too. So really, I just wanted to make sure that you understood the general uh, uh, concept. Um, I want to show you real quick, this is the uh, assignment that I, uh, uh, that I wanted everybody to look at. Uh, I'm not going to make everybody do the assignment. Uh, again, with us not being able to have an interactive lecture, I decided I'm going to cancel this as an actual you know, submittal for Friday. Uh, instead, what I've done is I've posted this assignment to Blackboard, and I've also posted the solution. So you all can uh, uh, review this to your, uh, to your heart's content and, um, and uh, uh, review this to your heart's content and, and be ready for Friday. Um, that's all I have. Again, I apologize for the network connectivity issues that we experienced. Hopefully, uh, this online lecture, I kept it pretty brief. Uh, we've only been on for about 30 minutes, so it's a little bit shorter than what we would have had in class. Um, but, uh, but again, I think this is a pretty simple concept. If we were going to miss something, uh, this was the day to miss. Um, so that's all I have. I will see you all on Friday. Everybody stay safe and stay healthy. Uh, that's all I've got.